you know, if you asked me this three or four years ago to talk about your feelings, I would have said, hell no, there's no way I'm doing that. Yeah, I grew up in Darwin. I was the oldest of eight siblings. Uh, sort of like a, a father figure of the group, I guess. Then when I was 15, I got a scholarship to Melbourne Grammar, um, which was really exciting, but um, pretty daunting leaving Darwin at, at such a young age and all my family. But I knew I wanted to play AFL and um, I knew that was sort of going to give me the best chance and also a chance to get a good education. I didn't want that life that probably a lot of my you know, uncles and family had lived. Um, I think growing up in Darwin, um, mental health wasn't a thing. I know I had friends and family members and that commit suicide and um, would never understand why. I'm like, why would like, why'd they do that, you know? As a young, as a young kid, and I, was, I wanted something different and so did my mum. So she was, although it was hard for me to say goodbye to her, it was, um, she knew it was, you know, for the right reasons. From there I finished, I did year 11, 10, 11, 12, and then went to, got drafted to the Gold Coast Suns and uh, then in inaugural year. And yeah, the football experience was very tough. We played one-on-one -on -one defense and um, we were all pretty young and used to just get smashed every week and just thought, Fire, maybe I'm not that good. I left and joined the Ds after they just played in a prelim. So I thought, oh, how good is this? I'm rolling into a team, they're gonna you know, hopefully go one better than the prelim. In round one, I tore both my groins completely done. I was done for 12 weeks um, and then that season we we finished 17th. I got I got done drinking as well when I was injured. The fact I couldn't be on the field helping my teammates just made it worse every time we'd lose like my name would come up in the media as well saying you know they could have used him but he's let the team down and it's just all these thoughts start you start to believe all your bad thoughts in your head and um, it was hard to es escape that I guess. What I did, I sort of shut down from my teammates and stuff because I felt guilty. My actions probably weren't reflecting on how I was feeling for the team. So um, it was certainly like the toughest year of my life, no doubt, 2019. I, I probably had you know, little mental health issues throughout my life and they sort of, they come and they go. But um, when I got to Melbourne, it, they were just hanging around and getting stronger and stronger and I just, I couldn't shake this like this feeling of being like sad all the time and, and angry. Even though like I was at the club I wanted to go to, I was in Melbourne, all these things. I was back playing footy, but I still was missing something. And the boys would play, you know, cricket at lunchtime or, or shoot some hoops, um, you know, have a chat, have a coffee. And I would just find myself like getting my phone and going laying down in the corner, just scrolling through Instagram and stuff, like just not being present. You know, the psych psychologists have always been available to to AFL players at footy clubs, but I'd always sort of thought they were, you know, that's not for me, like other people can access them, I'll, I'm all right. And the old cliche like prevention's better than cure, you know, so, you know, every week we get a massage, we get physio, keeping our bodies right so we're ready to play. We don't go and get it once we've torn our hamstring. Um, but for some reason with mental health, it's kind of like leave it, leave it, leave it till it builds up. Something bad really happens and then you get help. So it wasn't until I started talking to my psych at D's that I um, started to unpack some of the stuff that was going on and sort of reasons why I was feeling the way I, I was and um, could actually start to make sense of it but also put some things in action. Part of my weekly routine is playing golf because it's fun, um, I enjoy it but it's also a chance to be away from your phone for you know four or five hours and you know there's no cars and traffic and people out here, you're just playing with a couple of mates you versus the course, walking around in nature, you know, you've got a beautiful course set up here. You know, whether you play good or bad, like, I mean, if you play bad, you're a little bit angry, but you're not angry at everything else. You feel like you've just reset yourself, and I do that weekly, and it's, and it's part of my routine. I've got some timers on my social media, so if I'm uh, constantly, you know, turning the timer off, it means I'm spending too much time on my phone, and, um, and if I find myself sitting on my phone at lunchtime or, um, you know, not sort of hanging, avoiding people, uh, I'll, I'll just make an effort like, all right, get up and go and do it. And it's super important to, to recognise the signs. Um, it's, it's sort of like a, like a trigger, it can help yourself get back into, you know, in that happy place or, or, that, or that, you know, that nice place. See, my, my signs are kind of easy and like 
well now they are, I guess, so early days they weren't, but so it's easy to respond and I think some, some of my teammates know them now, or, or my good mates at least, so um, yeah, I've got a good sort of handle on it. Being vulnerable isn't a weakness. I put my hand up, I thought it definitely was. Whilst you might not think it's directly affecting someone else in the team, but if they see you act like that or open up like that, they'll be more inclined to do it themselves. And You just create a great culture like we have at the Melbourne Demons. Like, a, like I said before, I'm so lucky to be a part of this club because of how accepting we are of everyone and how we're always there to look out for each other. And I'm hoping you know any of these footy clubs and coaches that are watching this video can take something out of it.